Hi everybody, my name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. We're just very blessed, really. Uh, you know, when I sit here and I wait to, to give the opening to the show and to introduce the guests and the art and the, the videos that the Bridging show is, is going to include, you know, in this particular show of Bridging, what seems to really build is a feeling of, of real joy and real, real blessings, real feeling of being fortunate to be sitting here and sitting in this environment with so many beautiful people, so many people who have dedicated their lives in one way or another to really to feel love and share it, to serve that love, to use every bit of their earthly existence in a certain sense to express their feelings of being blessed and fortunate in all the different ways and all the different flowers in the garden and all the different spokes on the wheel to sing the praises of, of their human life and to recognize the in a certain way, the trials and tribulations of this human life, the frailties of this human life, and yet the extraordinary gift and blessing and power and glory and vastness and oneness and love of this human life. And for us here at Bridging, once again, we are so honored to be able to come together as a group and to, to share this message and to share these guests and to share these videos and these art pieces that come in from all over the world to express their love, to share their dedication, their commitment, their unrelenting desire to be of service. And there's so much of that going on now. There's so much hunger and desire and realization and, and effort to feel the love and share it, to serve the love, to be part of this. What we, we sense in our being is this grand transition from the experience of, or the illusionary experience of separation into the true experience of our oneness, of our connected love, of, of what we truly are as human beings on this planet, as beings. And we have this expression, whatever you think you are, you're more. And so as we go through this life, we can break down all the, the barriers of what we think we are and what separates us from others and have that experience of our infinite quality, of our inclusive quality, of what we call the oneness. And the more we have that over and over and over again, and we rub up against the magnet of that unconditional love, of, of that infinite, of that inclusiveness, we realize that there is nothing else that we really are except that, is that the Father and I, the Goddess and I, oneness and I are one. Love and I are one. And how blessed and fortunate we are to be more and more coming into that experience, to be more and more in realization and recognition of that ultimate truth in a human body. And to have so many people from all over the world coming into that realization and coming into that recognition and being able to share through their workshops and their books and their CDs and their television shows and their internet and social media, that vibration of inclusion, of infinite, of oneness, of love, is such an incredible gift for us and it's so around and it's so available and it's and it's our blessing and our gift now to be able to come together and collaborate in creativity and, and joyously and lovingly to be in that feeling of collaboration of creativity of love and tonight's guest is another one of those beings who's dedicated her life had an incredible life and has come to this realization that she's here to feel the love and share it. Satya Kalra is a spiritual teacher. She's an author. She's the founder of the Path to Anandam, 
and she's known for her blissful living lifestyle. And her mission literally is to live in love, to live in peace, to live in anandan, which is bliss and love, and to spread that experience, that vibration, that recognition, that realization to others. And the focus of her teachings is how to enhance the quality of your life to better experience that bliss, that joy, that ananda within you and to reach your unlimited potential. And that is just her unrelenting feeling of service, feeling of dedication, feeling of literally what she's here, what she took a human body, what she's here in this human body to do to feel the love, to share it, to serve it, and to spread it. And as most of you know, we also, on most bridging shows, we show videos and we show art. And today, uh, the videos are a beautiful video. Barry Goldstein uh, did a video called Heart Codes. And uh, we also have a BH and e a bridging art music video. It's called the Bridging Art Music Video number 13. Actually, if you want to see beautiful art music videos, go to the new bridging website, heaventoearth.com, and go to, in the more section on the right-hand column, go to uh, art music videos, and there are about 15 of them, so beautiful, so powerful, that show a lot of the art and have music with them. And these, this one was put together, number 13 was put together by Cameron Childs, who's 15 years old, and his beautiful mother, Bianca. And then we have the Barry Goldstein uh, Heart Code video. And it's also, as most of you know, we're in the middle of an extraordinary international healing art project that came as a dream, it came as a vision, as a healing, as an acupuncture for the planet, that we would reach out to the world and say, we, we will use this bridging distribution system, this bridging format that goes out all over the world through the internet, through cable stations, through satellite all over Europe, through YouTube and Vimeo, and anybody who produces a new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth and gets it to us here in California, we'll put it on the shows, we'll have art exhibits, we'll get it into museums, we'll get it into hospitals, and it'll be part of a great healing. And so far we've gotten over 400 pieces that have already been manifested with another five or 600 artists who are on the website as no piece manifested yet. If you want to be blown away, go to Heaven to Earth Art heaven to earth art com and just scroll page after page of these 400 manifested pieces and go to the art artist page and scroll down and you will see every artist involved which are literally a thousand now a thousand people from all over the world who want to be part of this healing who want to be part of this collaboration this creativity of these new paradigms being formed to heal the heart, to heal the illusion of separation. And again, we're blessed and honored to have this. And today we have one that Satya did, a beautiful piece. And another piece from India, a Sue N.K. did a beautiful piece, Soul Reborn. And she's from Jaipur, India. And uh, Sue, Sue N.K. did five pieces. So if you want to be blown away, Go to the artist page, go to SUI-NK, and scroll down and you'll see they're in alphabetical order by first name, so it's hard as it would be in the S section. And she's done five other pieces, and I'm going to show one today. So really, again, it's an opportunity for us to feel blessed, to feel honored, and for you to feel that same way, to you to feel that infinite, that inclusiveness, that brotherhood and sisterhood of humans so that we could all come together to, to manifest in love, to manifest in creativity, to collaborate, to really bring this to be a heaven on earth because we know we can and we know in essence that it's what it's supposed to be here. And that is our destiny and that is our service and that is our job now. So join me in a short meditation. Then we'll have the first art music video and then we'll have a satya and art and a more video and, and Barry's beautiful video. And again, it's an opportunity for us to all be together and to feel our love together. <clears throat>
Thank you. So the first video, as I said, is the Bridging Art Music video number 13. All the pieces you see are pieces that have been manifested for the International Healing Art Project. Uh, again, go to the new website. Under more, you'll see art music videos. Special thanks to Cameron and 15-year-old uh, uh, Cameron and Bianca. And the music is by Guru Ganesha and Spirit Voyage Music, so thanks to them as well. And also, everyone who wants to participate in the International Healing Art Project is welcome. The energy that's for it and around it and through it is the, is the energy of the infinite and inclusiveness. The more people involved, any skill level, any size, any format, everyone is welcome to join us. And the more people involved, the better the healing, the better the acupuncture. Okay, so uh, this is the Bridging Art Music video number 13. Enjoy.
Hi everybody, welcome back. So beautiful art, beautiful video. Thanks Cameron, thanks Bianca, and thanks uh, Guru Ganesh and Spirit Voyage for you know bringing such beautiful energy and collaboration together. And the incredible piece of art you see in between Satya and I is a digital art on canvas that Satya did, the divine heart, the bridge to heaven and beyond, oneness with all. So beautiful, so welcome. Yeah. Thank you for being and, here. And thank you to you, Alan. And thank you very much for having you, having me on your wonderful show. It's great. So why don't you tell people and you know how you came to, to manifest this incredible peace yeah. and what it means to you and love, peace, and Nandam. And... Actually, the, as a the name of the piece is that's a divine heart. And then divine heart, it's not that it is what it means to me or it came, it's just I created it. This was just the message I received from the Supreme. And I start manifesting and manifesting and then finally this happened. Actually, 35 years ago, when I was pregnant with my daughter, at one night, this symbol of Om came on flying at night and with the golden light and it totally encapsulated me and I did not know what it was but it was such a beautiful experience that every night after that when I went to bed that was my sleeping blanket and whole night I would be enjoying that manifestation and that unfolded me that it became my guiding light. And every time I had a anger, I had a hatred or jealousy or difficult time in my life, I would be just start thinking about that. And all of a sudden, the golden light would come. And it came to the point that light came and came and came, and I did not feel my body anymore. It just dissolved. And this divine heart just became, and not it just became, it expanded, and it took me to the whole universe. And I could see the whole universe. I see everybody in that divine heart, and it's just hard to explain, but it just that the whole universe to me was this heart, where everybody was residing in that heart. And my every cell of my body, every DNA, every atom, every electron, proton, genes, every ATCG, which are the elements of the genes, everything was just that light and that golden heart everywhere I would see it. And when I meet people, I don't see them as a people. I see them like when I'm seeing you, your heart is unfolding to me, and I see that light within you. So to me, that becomes the divine heart. And that's why you see that symbol. Because that symbol came to me, and it is the Om. It's a Sanskrit symbol. It could be spelled as A-U-M or O-M. And this is from India. And it is considered to be the generator of the whole universe. The origin of the universe comes from here. The root vibration. The root, root, root vibrations energy. of that. This is just the origination of the whole universe. And I experienced it. And when my heart was filled, I feel like totally love, totally peace. And then you see the anandam. Anandam means the eternal happiness. And that eternal happiness would be just keeping unfolding and unfolding and unfolding. And all of my miseries and my sorrows and difficulties will just melt down. And there was only one thing left, that divine love. And this div symbol not necessarily means just the symbol. It could be anything, goodness. You could put a flower of rose if you like it. Whatever you put it, nay, it doesn't matter. It's the whatever symbol. I like it or you like it. The symbol of goodness within me, that opens up the heart. And that open heart is called the divine heart, which is filled with love, compassion, forgiveness, contentment, anything you name it. It's all the virtues are there. And that's what the divine heart is.
and it kept unfolding and unfolding. And every time I sit and I just, when I was uh, working on this art project and I, so many things came to me and I do so many things. And finally it came to me, nothing lasts there. That heart just go, keep coming and keep coming. And finally I folded everything back and I said, this is it. This open heart, divine heart is the uh, piece of art which represents the oneness of the universe, and that's where I... And that's this. the one that should sit mm -hmm. in between us. Yes. <laughs> At least for the first <laughs> section, that's very fortunate. So, so why don't you take people a little bit, and I think you did, you know, on your journey into that experience, and you know, knowing that that was your service, to, to feel that, to vibrate that, to share that, to, to have that as your service. So from there, when the heart starts opening, then one of the transformation I felt within myself, that me, me, I am the one, I want everything for myself, my selfishness start dissolving. It's just like melting down, like a candle, when you burn the candle, and then the light is there, but you don't know when the uh, wax melts down, and the my ego, my anger, all the things which I did not like about myself occasionally, which come as I am a human being, so I have those emotions too. You know, everybody has those emotions. We are made with those emotions in a certain ways, but we just uh, kind of expand them. And I realized that those emotions which us were creating negativity in me and eventually creating negativity between the relationships and with others, it starts just melting down. And I totally become a different person. And just, I could embrace the whole world. That's the way I felt it. So my service, anything I do in this, in the form of service, I teach how to unfold yourself and how to serve. Like, I have a, one of the guru, which is Satya Sai Baba, and he says, love all, serve all. Help ever, hurt never. And with those four words or eight words, comes a lot of practice in it. So that becomes my service wherever I go. Even when I talk to people, and if I'm giving you a smile, and I am talking to you with open heart and compassionate rather than thinking my mind and look how he looks, how he, you know, kind of when many times when we meet people, then sometimes our ego comes within and we start kind of analyzing and judging people. And that, I had that too, and that has gone away. I, every time I meet people, I just see their open heart and I start looking how beautiful they look, how beautiful Ellen looks. and how open-hearted, what kind of service he's doing to the world. All these things comes and they give me more and more unfolding and motivation to do more work for the world. But my whole mission and my whole passion in this universe is that in this planet, I want to make or I want to help people to feel that compassionate for each other rather than complaining and fighting and all that and have a good relationship. And if we are filled with love and compassion, we can't hold it here. It will come out and it will go outside and serve the world. And that's what my passion is. And I feel that if I could do that, others can do it too. And if we, every individual start doing that, this universe, this world, this nation, even the families, will become the different place to live, more harmonious. And that's why I wrote it in, and it just came to me at the end when I was writing about the text about uh, the art. And at the end it came to me, what does really heaven means? Uh, what does earth means? Earth where we are living here, and sometimes we are happy, sometimes we are unhappy, Sometimes we are fighting, sometimes we are angry, we are engrossed with so many pains and miseries, and that's what the earth is. And sometimes we are happy too, it's not that we are. Uh, but what is heaven? Heaven is 
and everybody is living in a good relationship with compassionate heart and caring for each other, sharing with each other and respecting each other. That's what the heaven is. And everybody is in oneness with each other. So to me, that's what the heaven is. And I'm so glad that you are bridging the heaven and earth and making us a part of it. So I feel honored and so fortunate to be part of your art project. So thank you again for inviting me on this show. And everyone else is invited as well. So don't, no, 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 it's, you know, I mean, if you've, and I know you have, if you look through, you know, the art project and see all the pages and the art that's come in and in the studio here, we have the gallery that, and we rotate about 50 pieces. It is so uplifting and inspiring to see all this incredible giving and loving and manifesting in so many different forms, you know, and jewelry and, and acrylics and oils and sculptures of all sizes. And, and it, like you were saying earlier, I mean, so many people want to be involved and so many people want to share their love and don't really have outlets for it. And that's, you know, kind of our job is to, and our destiny is to provide those kind of outlets and bring all this love together. And, you know, we talk about it as having you know, separate points of light becoming a beam of light when we all come together. Yes. And so why don't you talk about that, about how this is the time that, you know, we're all really collaborating together and creating together. As I said, it's a wonderful opportunity. And so many people in this universe and in this world are on this mission. I'm not the only one. So many people are creating it. And I go to visit many ashrams in India. And I give a lot of workshops, and uh, I give talks in international conferences and many conferences. And I meet wonderful people where people are creating not just the, only the art, but as you know, the art comes, a lot of feelings and emotions behind it. And this is the manifestation and presentation of the work they do. But there is so much work goes behind it, and it's so thrilling to see that how many people all over the world are trying to make the difference in this world and helping others and trying to bring the virtues and happiness in other people and whether they are doing the health projects or they are supporting the uh, needy people or the, uh, I can give you an example. I, I was just in India and uh, we just opened a hospital in our hometown, my in-laws' hometown. Mm -hmm. My in-laws have passed away uh, a few years ago. So they don't need a hospital anymore. Uh, no, they don't, but this hospital no, is no. this <laughs> hospital is for the physical, physically challenged people. A lot of so them. what we did, we sold that house. And uh, our share, because there were other family members, so whatever, you know, everybody right. wanted to get it, that's fine. But two of brothers got together and said, we want to give this back to the society, and not only give back to the society, just to bring the peace and more recognize our parents, what the good work they did in their life. So just inaugurated the hospital where it is for the physically challenged people where they will make the physical limbs for them, like legs and hands, whatever they don't have, then they make the uh, physical mm -hmm. limbs for them and then give them the training and physical uh, uh, therapy, etc. So then they can use, get used to this uh, new way of life. And not only that they support themselves, but they become a contributor to the society. So they help other people. You saw my beautiful website. My website, the person, his name is Deepak um, Gupta, and he's the one who does uh, who does all the work for my website in India. And if you look at him, he's handsome guy. He's about 32 years, 35 years old. And when he was only seven or eight years old, due to polio or I don't know what happened, his this lo portion lower part of the body become paralyzed. So he functions only from here to here. And he's fully functionally head, brain, 
and he's the one who designs my website and he has some other employees who does it. So I work with those people to support them and motivate them and tell them you are as good as anybody else could do it. So I work with people to motivate a lot of youth, a lot of women. I, I, I'm very much into the woman spiritual empowerment. I don't call it just empowerment because then there is an ego, left mind, right mind comes. But the spiritual empowerment, and I work with a lot of women and children on that, those projects with them as well. That's beautiful. I mean, it's, you know, it's just a lot of, uh, you know, experience people have of, of not feeling their, their infiniteness, their vastness, their unconditional love. You know, because the one reason or another that this society is, and it's really important thing to have people recognize the extraordinary gift that they are as a human being. And that's what I tell them. I say, God has made every individual, even a bird, even a non-living, all the living beings or non-living beings, for some reason. Everybody offers something good. And if we see that goodness in them, then we are creating the oneness and giving that love and compassion to that person. The only problem is we have so much of information in our mind and past memories that when we meet people, we are very superficial. Even sometimes, you know, I notice if you ask somebody, how are you? Or if somebody asks me, how are you? Before I open my mouth, as long as I say I'm fine, I'm good, then they're happy. As soon as I, if, if I have any problem and if I say, they walk away. Because nobody has time for anybody. And that's what the real test is, that we have to listen to people. If we really are compassionate, what does compassionate heart mean? It means we listen to other people. We respect other people. And <laughs> I think it was said we treat other people as we'd like to be treated. Exactly. You know, which of us would like to be ignored? Very few of us would like to be. So maybe we'll talk about that and, you know, we'll get into treating others as we want to be treated and how to really experience that bliss, that ananda in the second section. So let's have this beautiful video, Barry Goldstein, uh, Heart Codes. Special thanks to Barry. His website is barrygoldsteinmusic.com. And, you know, it's just just a beautiful, beautiful uh, video, and it's, it's very lovely. And then we'll come back, and we'll have another piece of art and another section with Satya. So, Barry, Heart Codes, enjoy.
welcome back. So a beautiful video. Again, Barry Goldstein, Heart Codes. Uh, thanks to Barry. His website is barrygoldsteinmusic.com, as you think it would be spelled. And the beautiful piece of art you see in between Satya and I is by S-U-I-N-K, Sui N-K. It's called Soul Reborn. Uh, it's mixed media, uh, watercolor, and uh, 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 Su, Su N-K is from Jaipur, India. She's done five pieces in all. As I said, go see them on the website. And again, everybody who wants to be part of this healing, part of the acupuncture, part of this beautiful new paradigm and collaboration and creativity, Go to the Art Project website, Heaven to Earth Art, and look at some of those pieces. And if you're enlivened to join us and you feel moved to join us, please do. Everyone is welcome. We want to put out the energy of the infinite, of inclusiveness, of love. So everyone is welcome. So, Satya, here we are for the second section. So we were talking at the break about, about bliss and love and, and the, the tools or the, or the realizations of the understandings about that, about oneness. And we talk about oneness and every show is dedicated to the oneness. Why don't you talk about that a little? See, Ellen, we all want to be connected. We all want to be happy. No matter wherever I go, that's the one thing everybody tells me. Even we send our children to good schools, we work, we have a home, car, go for vacation, get married. Whatever we do in our life, we do for one reason. We all want to be very happy. And happiness comes when we are connected, when we operate from our heart. We get disconnected with each other when we totally operate from our mind, because mind has ego. And ego is two types. I'm not saying that ego is just a bad. There is two, good ego and bad ego. Good ego is self-esteem. We all must have a good ego, self-esteem. The bad ego is the arrogancy. I am better than you, competition. I want more than you. When it comes I-ness, 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 and mine-ness, mine is better, I am better, my house is better, my children are better. Whenever I-ness and mine come, that's where the mind plays a big role. And when that comes, it breaks the relationship. My way is better than your way. It creates a lot of problems in, in, at work, with, among employees, among the team workers, everywhere the bottom, reason or the main cause of the disconnection among people is the ego. I am better than you. My ways are better than you. And it's a beautiful verse in Bhagavad Gita, which is a scripture from India. It says, who is the most unhappy person on the earth? The one who wants to control others and who wants to control every situation and the outcome of the every situation. That person, because it can never happen. And that person could be a most unhappy person. So who is a happy person? Then question comes, who is a happy person? Who lives, who loves everybody? Who respects other people? Who sees goodness in other people? But if I am angry, if I am upset, how could I see goodness in you? Because my anger is overflowing. My upsetness is overflowing. So the causes for disconnection and happiness are our ego, our desires, too many worldly desires. I mean, we have to have a desire. I mean, I have to have a desire to reach here and come here. But if we have a too many uncontrolled desires, I want everything for myself, then that causes a problem. I have a car, fine, I can afford it. And I have a beautiful Acura, no problem. But if I want to go and buy a Ferrari because my friend got it and I don't have it and I can't afford it, then what am I doing here? Driving myself crazy because I want a Ferrari, driving my husband crazy. And I, have a, I am developing a jealousy for my friend because he has a Ferrari and I do not have a Ferrari. 
So what is the cause here, my desire of having the Ferrari? So where is this unhappiness is coming? My uncontrolled desire. That's the cause of my disconnection, unhappiness. Ego is the other one. Jealousy, hatred, resentment. All these emotions what we have or the programming in our mind or in our subconscious mind, that gives, gives us disconnected for the happiness or the connection with among people and doing good for the world. So next question comes in, what should I do? Everybody has those negative emotions. I have negative emotions. Who doesn't? Everybody does it. And that's where the comes, how can we do it? We, first, we have to recognize it, that I have those emotions. And when I get angry, after a while I feel kind of guilty because during the anger I might have hurt somebody's feeling. So I use the triple A strategy. It's a three A, so I call it a triple A strategy. So first one is, first focus on ourself. How other people are doing, what are the other situations? I have no control on it. I have control on myself. I can change myself. So focus on myself and self-discipline, self-development, self-improvement. So first thing I became aware of my things that these are the problems which is bringing unhappiness in me. And then I sit back and I analyze it. What are those problems? Where are they coming from? And I can tell you a beautiful story here that when first time I kind of realized that I attained something and after a while I become unhappy. I, I came to this country where I was making $1.65 a minimum wage and I wanted to be a supervisor and manager and then I became that. Then I founded my own company. I became the CEO, I became the chairperson. And I should be on top of the world. There is no reason for me to be unhappy. I have a beautiful uh, full husband, children, family, everything. But every time I set a goal, when I reached it, setting a goal was good. Reaching the goal was driving me crazy because I was working very hard. And when I reached it, I was happy. But then something else I wanted it. And then something else I wanted it. So this wanted thing was never the end of it. And that was a cause of my me driving me crazy. So finally I came to the conclusion that look, I could be running all over the world. So what is the main cause? The main cause is my worldly desires. Be satisfied. Self-satisfaction is the key, but how can I get it? So I start accepting it every time my unhappiness came or if I kind of felt that somebody's not happy about me and things like that, because I'm causing that, that unhappiness maybe in another person too. So I start becoming aware of it, and I made the list of the items. And there were 158 items which I did not like about myself. And you just gotten started. <laughs> and I got scared. I said, oh my God. Like, if I'm talking to you, and I said something, and you twinched. I'm paying attention that maybe something I have said which upset him. I am sensitive to that, and I don't want to cause that. So I'm making a list of those things, and then I start analyzing them. So I put them in 12 categories, and I was going to work on in 12 months and become a perfect person, and I was dreaming about it. Because when I made the list and I start working on it, it become very difficult. So it became my lifetime goal for that. But first, I used the awareness. I accepted it. The second A was analyze. Where is it coming from? So the first A is awareness. Awareness, and then acceptance. Analyze. And then the second one is analyze. Gap. Okay. I call it like a gap analysis. Okay. Like in business, we call it gap. So first, find out I have a headache. I can give you an analogy here. I have a headache. Now I have to go to see the doctor. So doctor is running all the tests. He's doing all analysis on me. Mm -hmm. Then he gives me the medicine to take it. So whatever action I have to take, like taking a medicine, that's the action. So self-awareness, analysis, and then action to correct it. So self-awareness, self self-analysis, and self-action for correction. So I call it a triple A strategy. And why? 
because I love AAA insurance. So to me, this was a divine assurance or divine insurance or my self-improvement or my connection or my happiness. So I started working on that and then there became the actions. So there were actions like first thing, focus on myself. That was my, because I teach seven steps. So first, seven steps. Seven steps. So first, triple A, and then I take the steps. And all the steps are not necessary because everyone does not need the, all the steps. But whatever I needed it. So number one, I had to focus on myself because whenever the problem came, it was another person's blame. It's a blaming game. It's a his problem. There's a her problem. The situation is bad. The politicians are bad. The weather is bad. Whatever is this, all the external factors. But I had to look inside. Everything was coming from me. So I have to go inside. I was connecting with like a internet. I have to go inner net to find the inner net connection there. So I start working on that. And then once I accepted it, then I made the commitment. OK, now I'm going to be happy, no matter what. So what I need to do? OK, focus on myself. Stop blaming others. And then I had to watch for my company. Because even though I wanted to be happy all the time, I'm surrounded with the external world. So now I have to see what kind of friends I have, what kind of company I have to make sure that they are in the same status of mind, or at least you know they're on the same goals. Because if I have those goals, and if my company has a different goals, like if I have a friends of stock brokers, I'm bound to invest money in stocks because I'm talking all the time and I'm pro. But if I do not want to be in the stock market, then I have to find my more spiritual friends. But then the question comes, which comes all the time to me. And they ask me, all the time you talk about good company. What can I do the people in my house? I come home. I cannot run away from them. I have, and believe it or not, everybody in the universe has somebody in their life who is not matching with their wavelength. And they would have a different, and they would, my, we think they are the cause of our disconnection. But the beauty of that is that when we are trying to connect, and when these disconnections come from our near and dear ones, then that's a litmus test for me that where am I on my spiritual path? Do I have enough endurance? Do I have enough wisdom to deal with it? Or am I running on my emotions? I'm in a roller coaster of emotions. If somebody said something at the house, you did not turn off the light, and I, are my emotions are up or not? No, because there is a, some message divine is giving me. So I have to be respectful to those people who take enough courage to tell me something, because it's not easy to tell somebody that you are not doing something. So that is the second step. And then third step, I call it, whatever you do, try to serve. Try to do something good for other people. And how we do it, first we have to start practice goodness. And I call it practice goodness. It means there are five things I use, practice goodness. I have five monkeys. So think good. See good in other people. Hear good, don't hear, just pay attention to gossips and all that, you know. And nowadays there are so much phone, all the cell phones, and then, you know, all these electromagnetic fields, uh, uh, rays are hurting our ears and all that. And then when we speak, we should speak very softly, truthfully, but not hurt other people's feelings or not raise other people's blood pressure. Sometimes we do that. And then when we think good, we can speak good, and then we can do good. So our goal should be to be connected to something good for the universe. And once we do that, we make sure we put love and compassion to it. Don't do the things because we, I have to do it. Not that I have to come here. I'm coming here so I can make a difference. Maybe I can contribute to somebody's life. Maybe I give a one message which might make a difference. So I have to put a love and compassion, whatever I do in my life. And on top of that, I can do all these things only when my physical body is in good shape, my mind is in good shape. So I have to do a yoga or exercise which gives endorphins in the systems and calm our systems down. And 
then I had to do some connecting exercises, which is my breath, we call it pranayama or breathing exercises, and do some prayers, do some meditation, and do our best, continue to practice. If something comes in our way, and we think that it's not working, do not give up. Continue, continue, continue to practice. And when we continue to practice, do our best, 100%. Give ourselves to that cause, not 99%, 100%. And when we do that, then we should let go. Leave it up to divine and take care of it. Not that now I want this result and this thing should happen. No, just let go and surrender and pray to God or pray to divine, whatever we name it. It's not that God or divine or supreme, whatever our belief system is. Then just pray for the universe to be at peace, at loving. That's good. beautiful. We're coming to the end of it. We'll end your section to pray for peace and love and oneness. That would be beautiful. So if you want any information about Satya, her books, her workshops, the International Healing Art Project, you know, just call me, Alan, 805-687-2053, 805-687-2053. Really, it's an opportunity for us all. Good night. We love you. God bless you. Thank you.